players? No, I, I think in a cap system, a young player at the right salary is essential. So I think people are going to hang on to their picks more, and we might be out of luck as far as moving up, but we're going to try. And the fact that we haven't been successful to this point doesn't mean anything to me. The two times I've done this, I did it on the floor. So if we have to do it last minute, we'll be ready to do it. Where do things stand with Jonas Gustafsson and perhaps coming over to join the Leafs? Well, unfortunately, Jonas's mother passed away, and uh, he went, he's dealing with that. And uh, my understanding is that once that's uh, dealt with, his mother's funeral is coming up. Uh, we're respecting his privacy, and then once that's dealt with, my understanding is he plans to come to North America and visit a couple of NHL cities, Toronto being one of them, and we'll make our pitch then. Is it safe to say, though, that you will be adding another goaltender before the season starts? Well, no, we'll see. Uh, I would say that's likely, but we'll see. Depends. Just a thought on uh, Steve Tambellini uh, hiring Pat Quinn earlier this week. Uh, pretty much a good hire, I guess, from your standpoint? Well, I was happy for Pat, and I was happy for Tambi because I think it's a good fit. I think Pat's a good coach, and... Uh, I think that that's a good fit for him in terms of the team, and I think Tom Rennie is a very important part of the staff, so I thought that was a good move. How much admiration do you have of the way that Pat actually handled the last three years or so instead of Salk and obviously went to work for Hockey Canada and experienced some good things? Well, Pat's, Pat's an Irishman, and we're all the same. We're, uh, we're not afraid of hard work, and we're not afraid to uh, roll up our sleeves, and that's what he did, and I'm really happy for him. It's, uh, he should be coaching in our league. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Brian, a month before the draft. Uh, w- still too early to, to think of volatility from where teams are, 1 through 10, and, and the possibility of maybe that deck being shuffled a little bit, or does it heat up once you get to Montreal? Well, I hope it'll heat up. Uh, right now it's dead. I mean, we haven't had any success with any of the uh, pitches we've thrown. But, again, it's uh, a long ways before the draft, and I've managed to move up twice, and both times it was on the floor. So the fact that we haven't had any success to this point doesn't discourage me. Does this process help in terms of altering anything in terms of a, a team's draft perception going in, or is it pretty much 95% hammered down and maybe changes beyond that? I would say on the high picks that, that, that it's nailed down, that this wouldn't have a whole lot of impact, but on later picks it can have a tremendous impact. On a you know, late first round, second round pick, uh, a player can really improve his stock here. Brian, you talked about your season-ending press conference about MLSC, and you said you know these are owners who are committed to win. Um, we, we just got here. There was a report about um, you being able to spend to the cap. Is that valid? And if so, can you just talk a little bit about that and where that sets this team up moving forward with what economic climate it looks to be ahead in the next couple of years? Well, there, there's a misconception that Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment isn't interested in winning. I don't know where that comes from. I know we haven't been successful, but you know, we're big blue. We're going to spend to the cap, and, and no matter what the cap is, we're going to the cap. So. Uh, we received that authorization, and we're gonna. You know, we've got cap room, we've got cash, and uh, we're gonna be active on July 1st. With knowing what's happening with the cap, how does that affect your plans looking ahead to July 1st? Well, for this year, I don't think there will be a big impact on the cap going forward. Starting with the 10-11 season, I expect some type of uh, you know reset, and uh, we're gonna be prudent about that. We're gonna be cautious about it and cognizant of it, but that doesn't mean that we still can't try to do something on July 1st. Right, and that was kind of my point, is knowing what's ahead, how does that affect your strategy this July 1st, knowing what's coming on the horizon? Well, I think it's a function of two things. You look at the guys, I think the risk is, if you're a GM and you say, well, look at these guys that will be available next summer, let's wait and see about that group, a lot of those guys are going to sign. And a lot of the guys who are slated to become free agents this July 1st are going to sign before July 1st, so... It's premature to say what your strategy is going to be, uh, but as far as long-term deals at Big Doe that go past the 10-11 season, uh, you know, we're going to be cautious about that.